Connecticut's number one local news. This is Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Good morning and happy Friday. I'm Caitlin Nuclo here with your top stories today. Soon it could be mandatory for all hospital employees to get the COVID-19 vaccine as the Connecticut Hospital Association is working on that requirement. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Aya Galal has more on when this could be implemented. It has been about six months since our nation's vaccine rollout began and we're learning members of the Connecticut Hospital Association have begun consideration of a statement of policy that would require COVID-19 vaccinations for their employees. This is a step towards additional patient safety. If we can say to our patients and their families and their loved ones and friends um, that we've taken every step we can to make sure that all of our employees are vaccinated, that's really important. Um, it's really important to our patients, but it's also important to our other employees, right, who have also taken that step, who also want to be protected. About 10 years ago, the Connecticut Hospital Association started making it mandatory for employees to get the influenza vaccine. So this type of requirement is not new. Health policy and bioethics experts say that if some employees choose not to comply, exceptions can be made. Maybe you're allowed to keep working, but you have to gown up differently, or maybe you're allowed to keep working, but your specific tasks are shifted away from patient care. And I think that's gonna vary based on what your traditional job was going to be. Aya Galal, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Many local pools are opening up just in time for you to help beat the heat this weekend. Starting at one o'clock this afternoon, all five East Hartford pools are open for the season. Lifeguards will be present at all the locations and they are available to all inside our, or outside of Hartford. The pools will close by 5 p.m. tonight. After some states tried to shut it down, the Supreme Court refuses to remove Obamacare. The states contesting the health care law believe it should be removed for the policy being uninsured. Their argument lost where seven votes were in favor of keeping the health policy in place. The official celebration for Juneteenth begins tomorrow. The day celebrates June 19th of 1865, when slaves in Galveston, Texas, were told they were free. The movement for Juneteenth to begin to become a national holiday has been going on for more than a decade, as the passing of George Floyd, though, helped fuel the legislative action. Those involved with the push hope that the day will serve as a reminder of black history. State police are investigating what they are calling two untimely deaths inside a home in Westport. That home is located on Lindell Park, which is right near the Merritt Parkway. Police tell us at about 4 o'clock yesterday afternoon, they responded to the report of an unresponsive woman. And when they got there, they searched the home and found a woman and a 7-year-old child dead. Police have not released how they died yet, but say there is no threat to the public. Beautiful start, beautiful day, 7.03. Hi, everybody, good morning. Our Doppler is dry. Yes, uh, for the third day in a row, we've got an absolutely gorgeous sunrise out there with kind of chilly temperatures, although we are, are out of the 40s, according to our neighborhood network of weathers, temperatures. 50 in Litchfield, West Haven, 58, West Hartford, 57, and Plainfield, 57. We still have some upper 40s out there, so you might want to grab a sweatshirt as you're heading out the door. Look at the one mariner in Old Saybrook making the scene even more beautiful than it already is absolutely gorgeous in Hartford right now with a temperature of 57 degrees and 50, uh, excuse me, 61 degrees in New Haven. Absolutely gorgeous. That temperature moved up nicely. So, oh, good. Everybody's out of the 40s now. We're in the mid to upper 50s now that the sun is up and it's doing its job. 61 in New Haven and in Bridgeport are the warm spots. Dew points are in the upper 40s and low 50s, and that's where they'll remain during the day today, if not drop a little bit. So today, pleasant. Tomorrow, a little spike in the dew points there and then Sunday we drop the dew points it's a warm day on Sunday but at least the uh, humidity will be down and then Monday and Tuesday we start cranking uh, it's going to be muggy if not downright oppressive on Tuesday and then a front moves through Tuesday afternoon and evening and that lowers everything for Wednesday temperatures and dew points for Wednesday and Thursday the winds are calm across the board everybody's calm this morning so as we take a look at the temperature trend, it will move up into between 80 and 85 with a mixture of clouds and sunshine today. And by late this afternoon through early this evening, we'll be under mostly cloudy skies. So the clouds are going to tend to take over as we march through the day today. Satellite and radar confirms there's not a lot going on here, but let me widen out the shot. We've got a storm system that's moving through the Great Lakes. That's going to be here 
Tomorrow afternoon through the evening, the frontal boundary is going to be making its way into a soupy air mass with winds out of the southwest today. That's going to pump up the heat. It's going to pump up the dew points. And we are talking about showers and thunderstorms developing tomorrow afternoon and evening. And some of those could pack a little bit of a punch. All right, this is early morning future cast. Tomorrow's weather today shows partly to mostly sunny skies to start. And then the clouds fill in by 5 p.m. Tonight, it's mostly cloudy through very early tomorrow morning. There could be even a spot shower through about noon, maybe a spot shower, but then we get back to the partial sunshine before more showers and thunderstorms roll in. This is seven o'clock tomorrow evening, so a little trouble out there. The Storm Prediction Center has placed us in the marginal risk category for receiving some strong storms tomorrow. So we're gonna ask that if you're out and about tomorrow, don't forget to have a safe haven to get to in the event that some of these storms do roll through in the afternoon and evening. Today's daytime highs will be between about 76 for Southeast Connecticut to 85 for Brainerd and Middletown. Even Danbury sneaking up to 85 today. And then your uh, seven day forecast includes a mild night tonight. It's not going to be as cool as it is this morning. 87 tomorrow, humid showers and thunderstorms in the afternoon and evening. And then for Father's Day, the first day of summer, it looks like a nice day, a warm day, a hot day, 90 degrees. Gets even hotter from Monday with more humidity and an isolated shower or thunderstorm. Tuesday, showers and thunderstorms roll through in the afternoon and evening, and that'll lower the heat and the humidity for Wednesday and Thursday, the beginning of the Travelers Championship. That's a check of your early warning forecast. We're going to send it over to Caitlin Francis, who's got a check of the roads and some summer destinations for us today. Hey, Kate. Hey, Scott. Yeah, we are if checking out that summer travel for you. So it's going to be a pretty decent weekend to get out, travel around southern New England. So if you're planning a trip, maybe to hang out with dad for Father's Day, we're in good shape. Drive times and speeds. I'm showing you drive times and speeds for this morning because I want to give you just a baseline for what you might be dealing with across the state. And then uh, depending on where you're heading, that could impact uh, how long it takes to get where you're going. So we're going to start in Middlebury, Quasi Amusement and Water Park from Hartford, Waterbury and New Haven. Your average drive times, uh, obviously, if you're traveling through Waterbury, there's construction out, construction out there, and that could slow you down, especially if you're going to be traveling from Hartford or New Haven. So make sure that you're aware of that. And then we'll take you to Lake Compounds in Bristol from Hartford, Waterbury, New Haven. Drive times are pretty average, and then the best routes to get there will take you up over the state line into Massachusetts and Aguam for Six Flags. So if you're heading up there for a day of fun from Hartford, Waterbury, New Haven, same thing, average drive times. You should be pretty good getting across the state line to head to Six Flags. But if you're planning a beach day, it's going to be pretty nice to get down to the shoreline, especially today. Scott just mentioned have a plan in place if you're heading out tomorrow. But if you're heading to Silver Sands State Park, then uh, again, Hartford Waterbury, New Haven, 95 always gets backed up, especially on a nice summer weekend. So make sure that you are budgeting in tons of extra travel time. Hammonasset State Park, and then we will take you over to Rocky Neck State Park. So again, you're going to want to make sure that you're budgeting in just a few extra minutes to get to those state parks and beaches in Connecticut. Also, if you're planning to head to Rhode Island, so 95 to Misquamacet, Narragansett, and Newport, we're going to take you out now live and give you a look at what that condition might look like in Rhode Island. This is in North Kingstown. This is the Jamestown Bridge heading towards Newport. It's a beautiful start to our Friday. This is probably what you might expect to see throughout the rest of the weekend, with the exception of those storms that might roll through tomorrow. So again, this will look a little different as those beachgoers head to the shore. We'll take you out now because the Cape is already starting to get busy. We're going to take you to that rotary, which heads to the Bourne Bridge. This is the Bourne Rotary, and this also can jut you off to the Sagamore depending on which direction you're going. So uh, Friday morning, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, this will back up majorly. Budget in lots of extra travel time if you're heading to the Cape and Islands. I'm Caitlin Francis with your Connecticut Chevy Pinpoint Traffic Report driven by your Connecticut Chevy dealers. All right, and thanks for tuning in to Eyewitness News this morning. Remember, you can get news and weather updates anytime on the Channel 3 app. Have a great day. Thanks for watching Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Watch us live wherever you are, on our mobile, on our streaming news app. And you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.